Hey everyone, welcome back and happy Tuesday. All right, guys, it is Tuesday, right? I think it's Tuesday, is it? Yeah, it is Tuesday. My God, I, I'm not even joking. I can't keep up. Anyways, guys, we're back to talk about some Vicky Gumbelson because, well, and OC, we have some Tamara stuff too, but this actually made me really sad for her. And I was going to share good news, but now I feel like, well, it is good news because she's doing better. We're going to get into it. Before we jump in, if you guys haven't already, go ahead, pop off in the comment section. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. I think it's safe to say let's jump right in. All right, guys, before we get into it, I have to say a huge thank you. Everybody's been asking me about where to find Monica and I's new Salty podcast. So it is literally under the Up and Adam podcast. I saw this morning the top shows under TV and film, and I was scrolling down to see, and we are right there at number 17. So you guys can go click on Up and Adam. When you do, you can scroll down. You can see the Salty podcast. We're doing another podcast episode today that should be released tomorrow, but definitely check it out. And thank you guys for all of the support. I love you guys. I know that some people were immediately like, I'm not listening if Monica's a part of it, or I'm not Adam, how could you? And other people were like, oh my God, this is going to be amazing. Guys, do things that challenge you, put you out there. And also not everybody's going to love what you do, you know, and that's okay. I have a different relationship with Monica and a different dialogue. So for me, I knew that this was going to be good with the potential of being great. So I'm I'm ready to see that journey of it. And I hope you guys are a part of it. And thank you to anyone and everyone who is supporting. But with that, let's get into the Vicky Gumbelson of it all, shall we? Thank you to page six. This is sad. Vicky Gumbelson detailed the deadly health crisis that she experienced earlier this month that caused her to have a lot of hours missing in her life. Now, she recalled on Monday's episode of My Friend, My Soulmate, My Podcast that she developed amnesia seemingly out of nowhere. There seems to be about an hour or two that I was missing, and I don't know where I was. Hmm. She said that she began talking gibberish to a client that was coming into her office, and that's not good. The client in question happened to be a retired doctor who urged her boyfriend, Michael, Smith's daughter, Olivia, that the Bravo Liberty could be having a stroke. She said, I don't remember anything. And Olivia took me to the hospital. Now, Vicky said that physicians ultimately misdiagnosed with the sinus infection and discharged from the hospital later that night. She took antibiotics, but Olivia insisted on calling her father to come home and care for Vicky. She was lethargic and she really didn't understand where she was, is what Michael said on the podcast, noting that the doctors kind of ran with the sinus infection diagnosis after being told Vicki Gumbelson recently recovered from one. Now, Michael called the doctors after prescribing one of the scariest, scare, well, describing, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about prescribing medication and anti inflammatory I don't even know what you prescribe her. But he's describing one of the scariest moments of her health crisis in which he found her pretty much passed out in a bubble bath. I grabbed her, pulled her out of the water, put her in bed. The doctor said she needed to sleep. So I put her in bed and she slept literally 13, 14 hours straight. She had a massive infection. It was actually sepsis, but it was pneumonia. And what happened is that when your body is fighting a big, you know, that big of an infection and that dangerous of an infection, your whole body attacks it, which affects the brain and everything else in your body because your body sends everything it has to fight it. So now she grew emotional, obviously, as she recalled a neurologist telling her that she had 10 to 20% chance of survival. She said, I cry a lot. Michael keeps saying, why do you keep crying? And I don't have an answer. I mean, rewind a week ago, we were in Barcelona walking 16 to 20,000 steps and we were having the time of our life. And three days later, I'm in the hospital. But she, I think, is in good hands with Michael. And he also assured fans that her health is improving. She will be fine and she's coming out of it. But I couldn't imagine because she has her little grandbabies. She has her her son and her daughter. And, you know, even I'm, I'm sure Tamara, even seeing this, like Tamara... I, I saw a couple comments where people are like, oh, well, this is voodoo. It's like, no, it's not. Because 
at the end of the day, even if Tamara and Vicky are not getting along, which to say it's voodoo is the most fucking ridiculous thing, but even if they're not getting along, the woman, Tamara, is great on reality TV, and she's messy as hell, which makes great reality TV. It gets the ratings, but she's not going to wish ill. The two are not the same. You know what I mean? Like, let's relax for two seconds here. But speaking of Tamara, I did want to go ahead and bring this up as well, because <laughs> thank you to Reality Blurb. Season 18 of The Real Housewives of Orange County might be turning well, a new leaf. For Tamara Judge. While some fans give her credit for bringing the other ladies' drama to the forefront, others feel she's more of a bully. This has caused a ton of backlash for the OC veteran online. Now the two T's and a pod co-host is opening up about her own drinking and admitting that she's a bit of a problem when she partakes too much. Plus, she discusses the drama from this season. As fans know, Tamara has talked a lot about Shannon Bedore's DUI this season. In fact, she even went as far as to call her out at a dinner party in an episode earlier this season, and this led to fans online discussing Tamara's drinking habits. Recently, Tamara sat down to have a conversation with the cider, and they started by discussing Tamara's relationship with Shannon and the backlash she's gotten for bashing her. And Tamara said, I know her better than anybody. I have been there for her. I have kept her secrets. I have lied for her. I've done everything to protect her for so many years, and I just can't do it anymore. They then discussed Jennifer Pedranti, who says that Tamara is a problem when she drinks. And Tamara said, oh, I am a problem when I drink. I'm an asshole when I drink. I just say whatever I feel like saying. I don't lie. That's one thing. But I just say the things that are deep down inside. Tamara then went on to say that she slowed her drinking after filming a certain scene for this season. She said, I really rarely drink the rest of the season. I mean, I didn't have to run my car to a house to say, you know what? I need to stop drinking. Mm, the digs, the digs don't stop. <laughs> Tamara also discussed Vicky Gumbelson calling her evil and saying she has a black heart. And she said, I would say as far as the Vicky situation, I've done nothing to Vicky. I have been there through her lying about cancer, through her ex-boyfriend Brooks, and through her ex-fiance Steve Plodge. And I've cried on the phone with her for many, many years. And we've gone through issues with kids and marriages and divorces and grandchildren. And I'm sick to my stomach that she would go to the extent to say such horrible things about me. They then discussed the videos Alexis Bellino threatened to release, according to Tamara. I do think that she probably, John will never release those videos. I don't think, I think that they will be brought up at the reunion. And I think that Alexis will probably tell everybody what's on them. And I think everybody's going to be shocked. I've heard, and it's bad. Now, of course, it's now being said that the ring camera footage shows Shannon almost running over John Jansen's daughter. But the interviewer then asked Tamara about getting annoyed at Alexis for constantly talking about Johnny J. Tamara said, well, I don't know. I mean, they seem very much in love. It's going on a year now. And we just poke fun at her because we've seen Alexis in the past years. And whoever she's with, she's very into and very supportive of her man. And I respect that of her. But when on this trip, you know, to not talk about any of that stuff. That's that's why we went. And I clearly say in the car, which I don't think they showed, guys, my big bear house is zero drama. It is called my happy place. We do not talk negatively at the cabin. And it just came up. It just came up. But I love seeing Alexis giggle and laugh. Her giggle is infectious. And she's funny. And there's so many other things that she talks about, but they just haven't shown it. Now, Tamara also responded to the idea that she's changing Emily Simpson for the worse. And she said, I was totally shocked with this narrative that I'm turning Emily into an asshole. Emily's a very smart woman. She's ed educated. She's an attorney. She has her own opinions. Me and Emily do not have powwows talking about how we can possibly be bitches to people. And I took offense to it. And I thought, wow, Gina, that's what you think of me. You think that low of me. You think I'm going to persuade people to be mean. It was just a couple of episodes ago when she was yelling at Jen to pay her bills and calling her a squatter. So who taught you how to be a bitch? So it's very confusing, but it just wasn't okay with me. <laughs> Good clap back. Tamara also discussed the belief that Gina Kirschenheider set up Katie, the newbie, regarding the Heather DeBro picture. She said, well, first of all, it was because of what Katie had been telling me. Katie told me that basically months before we started filming, Katie and Gina became friends and Katie gave Gina this information and Gina said to her, you need to bring that up. If you get cast on the show, you need to bring that up because Heather, it would be so great and it would be so funny and Heather would think it's funny. She was just pushing for Katie to be on the show. She was 
calling each one of the cast members trying to sell us on Katie. And we're like, okay, but we don't do the hiring, but whatever, that's fine. And then when Katie does say it, Gina got questioned at the golf tournament. And I think somebody said, well, Gina, you knew about this. You were sent the text messages confirming Heather called the paparazzi. And then she suddenly couldn't use her phone, didn't know why it wouldn't turn on and was like, I got to go. And she acted very suspicious. So I'm like, it looks like she set you up. So we'll see what happens. Oi, oi. Okay. Well, the good news is, is that Vicki Gumbelson is back in good health. I do want to say nobody ever wants anything bad to happen to any of our housewives, whether you like them or don't like them. It's not that deep, guys. It's a TV show. So please, let's be nice in the comment section. But I also wanted to say, hey, thank you again, guys. If you didn't catch it at the beginning, we'll catch it at the end. Go over to anywhere you get your podcast. We are under TV and film. You can scroll down right now. We're at number 17, which is amazing. It's under the Up and Adam podcast. You can see right here, and then you can scroll down and see anything with a thumbnail that shows Salty Podcast. That's us. But I love you guys. Smash the like button, show some love, and we'll see you next time.